do a talk, he said. It will be fun, he said. And at that point, we had already been discussing, like, what's, what's a good Noah Bunga talk? And I said, you know, something interesting, something new, something cool. Something you can show your colleagues on Monday and just impress them. Something you can just pick up and use. You can save the project. Perfect. So I, I, when it was time to choose something, I choose something else. I choose the waterfall model. Um, so I, I'm sure you're all familiar with the waterfall model, which is, you know, has been considered obsolete for as long as I can remember, and it's, it's just stupid. Um, but anyway, let's start from the beginning. So let's just Google it using DuckDuckGo. And uh, we we'll skip over the first Wikipedia link there because it's for nerds and just head on to the tech target. American marketing from tech target, they should know everything there is to know about the waterfall model. Um, so we greeted with a super nice article and this thing that should look familiar to all of you, I guess. Yes, super familiar. Um, so th yeah, this is, this is basically the perfect software project, right? So um, let's just walk through the stages. We start with the requirements, which, you know, you just meet up with the customer and you ask them what they want and they tell you and you're done. So done. Um, in the analysis step, we try to make sense of those requirements. We model business flows and, and think of business logic, that kind of stuff. And design is where the fun kind of starts. We think about architecture, uh, kind of create a blueprint for the implementation. Um, the coding step is obviously where the actual work happens which can done, be done mechanically, assess uh, in the book or whatever. Yeah, it's super simple so if you have a good design. Uh, during the testing phase, we just make sure that the uh, software is 100% bug-free. Now it's time to meet the customer. Like We haven't talked really during this whole time, but now it's time for deployment, so we hand it over. The customer is super happy, on time, on budget, feature complete. So happy days, and we go into the maintenance phase where we just roll up updates. There's minor updates to the software patches uh, from time to time. Uh, so it sounds great, but uh, did you know that there are problems with this approach? Um, <laughs> there are problems with this approach. So one is we, d we don't really talk much to the customer, just in the beginning and the end. So we don't really know what we're, if we're building the right thing. Um, we cannot really go back. Like once we finish something, once we have a specification, it's finished. So too bad if you got it wrong. And if you get something wrong, if, if you get a bad, bad design, you might have to start over the whole process. So that's, that's a nice cost overrun you will be having. So who came up with this? Well, this idiot, uh, I, I guess, uh, at least according to this article. And, and this article here from 1970 by, by Winston Royce is referred to in so many articles. Like if you Google it, you'll find thousands of reference to this paper. So I, I guess either he didn't know better because it was really like over 50 years ago, or I don't know, he's trying to sell us something, like, the, like a scrum master from the 70s. So let's go, back to, <laughs> let's go back to the start, the paper. So it's called Managing the Development of Large Software Systems by Winston Royce. And um, it's usually called like, the original paper on the waterfall model. The, the word waterfall never appears in the paper. I don't know, um, but it reflects his, his experiences at um, TRW. Not sure if TRW if you're familiar with that, but they, they did um, satellites, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, that kind of stuff. Uh, so he worked on um, mission planning, um, monitoring, f orbit insertion, just, yeah, uh, rocket science, basically. So, and we have a look at the paper, we see this, and it, it looks familiar, right? It looks like the tech target article. So there's no maintenance phase. I don't know, maybe after you launch a satellite, you cannot, I don't know. Um, and we have two phases up there, but, but it's the same. So I guess we're done. We check the source, it's the same. So uh, let's see, what do you think Royce said about this model? He said it invites failure. That was the best joke, by the way, of the presentation. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, he thinks th this is not going to work. He realized, like, this is the original paper. This is where we learn about this model for the first time in history. And he says, it's garbage. He says, try this instead. It might work. 
Uh, I don't know, but I, I don't know. I, ca I cannot be bothered to learn all this. Um, but anyway, we, that's an exercise with the reader. But we can have a look at the box up there and see what it says. So these are, uh, if you have problems with your Butterfly model, these are the, this is the Royce Five Points program to reduce risk. Um, and, and I think point number three is going to surprise you. So, um, step one, we iterate on the design. So, design is a big problem. Like, if you get it wrong, you might have to start over the whole thing. Um, but if you try to do it early, you don't really know exactly what you're going to do. So, you do a design, you analyze again, you design again. So, you're going to iterate on the design. This is super important. Uh, number two, ample documentation, not so fun maybe, feels waterfall, but I think it's just amusing that it says that programmers don't like to write documentation. Like even in the 70s and 60s, it was like that. Um, and if they don't, you should uh, replace management. It's, it's true. Uh, yeah, and number three, uh, yeah, my favorite, build a prototype. Like, because you <laughs> know that you're going to get it wrong the first time. So build a prototype. Make sure, you make sure you get it wrong and that you learn from it and then build it again. Uh, number four, of course, we should uh, test things. Um, it's not so controversial, but I think it's interesting maybe to point out that testing uh, in the 60s and 70s was expensive. Like, you couldn't just get a, like a developer laptop and run your things on it. They didn't work like that. Computer time was expensive. So it would print out the code on paper and just read it, just read the code. And that was an important part of testing. Um, it's, a, it's like a code review, except today we're just doing a pretend code review, so we don't actually look at the code, do we? Do you print the code? I almost never do. Um, and, and number five, involve the customer, because as it says, given the contract a free reign be uh, between specification and deployment is inviting trouble. And it is. Um, so, uh, by the way, this is what Robert C. Martin says. Like, I don't know if I really agree with him, you know, Uncle Bob, but it, it supports my thesis. So, uh, yeah, I agree with him. So, yeah, he presents the straw man, right? He presents this stupid model of an idealized process, and he says, yeah, I wish this was how things worked, but they never do. It's just, it's just a straw man. Then he attacks the straw man and says, you have to add these things, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, so, basically, the paper is not about the waterfall model. It's about why it doesn't work. So the tech target ar article said you cannot revisit things um, once you finish something. And I have experienced this in some projects that you have something in the specification or in design and it's garbage. And someone says, too bad. It's just like that. You can't go back. We decided on it. So the question is, does the paper say that you're not allowed to do that? Or are you allowed to go back? Are, are you allowed to backtrack? You can answer it. No. You, you're supposed to say no, okay? <laughs> Are you allowed to go back? Well, that's what you think, yeah? <laughs> of course you can go back, that's stupid talk. Um, but you still, you still have the problem that if you go back and have to start over from the beginning, you're looking at a 100% cost overrun, like it says, that's not too, so good. But, you know, you, you, can, you can go back, it's no problem, really. Um, okay, so... How did this happen? Is it is it a recent, a recent misunderstanding? Because sometimes it feels like you know people might be trying to sell us um, agile, and um, they are talking about these old ways of doing things, like companies used to do waterfall, and now there is this new thing called agile. Um, so is this something that happened just recently? And uh, let's ask the Bible, which is this one. So it's, it's used at universities all around the world um, for you know, lying about software engineering, I guess. Uh, so we went back in time a little bit. This is the third edition from 1992. Uh, and yeah, it presents the waterfall model. Uh, and uh, yeah, as we can see, it demands a sequential approach. For example, so you, you, you can't go back. And this is before Agile. So Agile happened, I mean, I can say that Agile has kind of always been around, I guess, but I think the first 
Scrum project for SIN 93, something like that. Yeah. So th th this was too early to try and sell um, Scrum Masters. And then it goes on and it just goes like over the past decade, uh, we have kind of discovered that the waterfall model doesn't work. And that would have been during the 80s. But we knew that already. It was the point of the paper was that it doesn't work. Uh, but apparently that, that was something that we discovered years after. So since we are trying to teach how this model works, you could imagine that Pressman would go on and explain things in more detail. Um, but he doesn't really. He doesn't mention that you can add things such as you can add prototyping, you can iterate on the design, you can involve the customer. No, you can't. It's, the model is garbage, too bad. Uh, anyway, so eight years later, there's a new edition uh, of this book, and now there's actually a, a, a citation. So look, we have the paper here. So I guess in the last one, he just kind of used his imagination to come up with this uh, section. Now he read the paper. Um, so now he doesn't say some demands anymore, as he suggests. So that's good. Uh, but of course, he might have to rewrite like big parts of the article as we rewrite after reading the article. So I guess he just said, um, you know, let's just explain that the paper doesn't matter. <laughs> let's just say that, you know, it says in the paper that you can eat right, you're going to run But no one does that. Like the vast majority of organizations don't do that. So, yeah, I didn't, didn't have to rewrite the whole thing. So that's good. I, I don't know if this is what happened. But, but it probably did. So, uh, yeah, step one, you present something that's really bad, and, and, and you pretty clear in the paper that, yeah, this is bad, don't do this, except the picture is so nice. You just look at it, and you think that you understand, like, oh, I understand thought development. It's just like water. It's affected by gravity, and also it's a liquid, right? So you're done. You, you just see the picture and go, like, this is good. Um, People like Pressman start teaching the model, and uh, companies think that this is, you know, this this is great. I, I don't know. It's 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 a bit weird to be to be honest. Uh, so there are a few takeaways. Yeah, sometimes it feels like the the agile movement during the nineties was a sort of awakening for software development, and I guess it was in a way. We had all of these things like XP and Crystal and uh, rational unified process, right? Good stuff. Um, that was during the 90s. But th there wasn't really an awakening. I guess some people just <laughs> just realized what Royce had already realized many years ago, um, that the thing didn't work. And that was the point of the paper. But for some reason, that was not clear enough, I guess. Um, and <sighs> number two, I'm a bit uncertain if What's the takeaway here? <laughs> but it's it's really it. You you look at the picture and you feel like okay, this is this is great, um, but you want to sell something different. So I'm thinking about if you want to sell something, uh, you know, don't make pictures of the stuff that you don't want to sell, or something. I'm I'm not hundred percent sure exactly what what the, what the point is, but there there, there was a misunderstanding. <laughs> Um, and yeah, um, if you read articles, I guess it would be a great idea if you go back and check the source just generally. Um, reading these old papers is, is really good fun. Uh, and I, I think it's quite inspiring to see, um, like when, when we read a paper by Royce, like his world was very different and the software he developed was, was very different. But in many ways, they struggle with similar problems. Um, so it can be quite entertaining to read the source, and sometimes it's just a good idea if there's a discussion about the paper that you actually go back and read the paper. One takeaway that I wanted to put here, but I, I didn't. Let's see if this works. Yeah, um, I'm a bit surprised that this isn't a <laughs> waterfall model. This is actually the first thing that we see in the article. This one. Um, it would obviously be ridiculous to think that this would never work, the waterfall model, because it says, you know, in some cases you have something very sim simple, an internal application. Why not just do it like this? Because this is essentially any software uh, process, isn't it? You think about what to do, and then, and then you do it. So very simple. 
um, but also very flawed once you get to, to larger software systems, of course. Yeah, or, uh, that was too soon. I was going to have some more filler, I thought, but maybe we can have a longer discussion. Yeah, um, that's actually the end of the presentation, yeah? <laughs> so. Okay. Eric, you are a natural. A natural what? A natural speaker. <laughs> that was really good. It was like one of those, like, I laughed, I cried, it moved me. Uh, it was, it was I, really great. I like this discussion. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you thought that it was going to be a discussion with you guys, but it's just actually a discussion with us. <laughs> I take that back. Okay, so now it's Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, if you want to add any anecdotes uh, to what Eric talked about here, raise your hand, and I will come to you with a mic. Perfect, we have one here. Thank you for the talk, uh, Eric. It was pretty cool to listen. Um, I get a bit of a reflection about the, like, uh, in your call, in your talk, you feels like you go back to the that article naming it as the source of the waterfall model. I always felt like when we talk about the industry, I don't think many companies were actually reading the literature uh, about the uh, like origins of waterfall. I was th was thinking that origin of this approach is because this is how we did things before the software era when we were drawing a de detail like physical component of machine, then we are stamping it somewhere, and then we were maybe testing it and deploying it. Waterfall model works pretty well in this well-defined manufacturing scenarios where we don't need to change things on every iteration. Right. So I felt it come to software industry from this more traditional uh, hardware manufacturing. Uh, how do you, th do you think this uh, idea yeah, no, uh, de definitely. And uh, Royce himself came from the systems engineering side of things. Um, so it definitely makes sense that this is the, probably the first approach that you would try. That it just feels natural that you would think about, you know, the, the product that you can that you can plan and control and uh, whatever. Um, um, and in the end, you, you deploy it, and, and once it's out there, like it's, it's, it's done, and you don't have this thing that happens in, in agile projects, usually, where you have this project which is kind of run, just going on forever, where the, the plan is to continually developing the, the software together with the customer. It's not really like that. And instead, you have a product, and it's finished, and it's, it's feature complete, and it's like that. Um, but then it's interesting then we, when you go back and you look at this project, um, or these projects I was working on, where you have basically very clear requirements and the scope is super clear and, and every, like it should be the ideal software project. Should, you should be able to make this work. But even then, like they couldn't do it. Yeah, basically NASA couldn't do this. So it's a bit weird in a way that pe companies would keep, keep trying. But, oh yeah, uh, but I have a law. So this is Moberg's law. I came up with this two, year, two days ago. Uh, so the Morberg's law is <laughs> um, when uh, waterfall is what happens when companies develop software and agile is what happens when individuals develop software, right? Is it, is it true? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you want to have this, you know, you want, you want to be able to plan the project and you have a budget and you have all these things. If you remove all that and you just kind of do what you want and do what you like, you will have an agile process. But it just doesn't fit very well into many pro uh, companies and how they work and how the end product will look like. I hope I didn't answer your question. So I had this question. The, the waterfall model, uh, in your extensive research that must have done to be able to de deliver such a good talk, <laughs> you must have bumped into a few things. So the waterfall model, it seems to me that it might be similar to other sort of lean processes where every step of the way has to be correct. So if we take, for example, the Toyota model, the lean model, are there situations where a waterfall or very waterfall-y 
process is actually the process to use, maybe in a different field, maybe not in software engineering, or maybe there are specific types of software engineering where a waterfall model is the way to go. Yeah, definitely. I would be surprised otherwise. Uh, and and it's, it's really, I guess it comes down to what is it that you, you're trying to build and, and, and what's a good fit for that project in the end. So in the end, it, 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 it depends, you know. Um, even though I'm not really sure if I would see um, how Waterfall would work very well with Lean in a way, but maybe that's, that also has, has to do with, um, yeah, we should actually all just stop using the word <laughs> Waterfall. It's a dirty word in a way, isn't it? Like you just have to say that, you know, this is Waterfall, it's bad. Um, because in my opinion, it's, it's not lean. It's not lean because it's you try mostly to serialize things, but in lean you're trying to use the resources that you have by basically here you having a you might be having a whole department of analysts just you know doing nothing because the requirement phase is not finished or something like that. Um, anyway, so so uh, yeah, um, I, I, the answer is don't say waterfall. Say what you mean. <laughs> Uh, instead, if you if you think something is serialized, do you, th you think you're having problems because of that? You know, say that instead. As I'm just annoyed when someone says waterfall. This is a waterfall process. No, it's not. It's what you think is a waterfall process. It's not what I think is a waterfall process. Yeah. Anyway. Um, any more questions? <laughs> Yes, uh, thanks for a great speak. Uh, does he mention, uh, talk anything about like the scope of things? Uh, I mean, what we're seeing here, like if you're like scoping things down, it's not that that different from how you're doing things today, I would say. Uh, but if you're going to build like a space shuttle, uh, you have one. <laughs> you can only fire it once, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so it, it is. It is. It is very di very different in, the, in that case. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it generally talks. This is about large uh, software models uh, or uh, software projects, I guess. So I guess generally the scope is big, uh, and. Um, also, we cannot rely on because some, sometimes I think that we com we programmers are a bit uh, overconfident in our ability to understand absolute everything. Um, that we start working in a business, you know, and they are in the financial business, where we go like, okay, I don't know anything about financial stuff, but it doesn't matter because I know uh, C sharp or something. Um, but that these are areas where it can be, you know, you really need the experts. So when we talk about the uh, analysis phase, for example, we may not be really talking about just kind of casually looking at things, but we're talking about we having a whole department of um, experts on orbital mechanics and they do the calculations and maybe the programmers, what they need to do is just to implement those algorithms. I mean, they might not, that might not really be the problem in some cases. Um, there's not so much talk about that actually in the in the article. Uh, I, I I think in a way the article is just you can think of it as just the embryo of you know a lot of ideas that didn't really take hold until much later. Um, a few things are not really discussed. For example, resource utilization. It doesn't seem to be a problem. For example, that you have a lot of people that not really do anything. Anything. I think being in a contract for NASA is just you don't have really have to care about those things as long as you meet the deadlines. So. It, it is a different world in many cases. And uh, no, I don't think that NASA will ask you to change the colors of any buttons. Maybe SpaceX would. I don't know. Um, thanks for a great speech. Um, so I'm a bit curious about uh, the term waterfall. If Dr. Winston did not come up with that, um, who did? Uh, there was, I think it was a colleague of his in a later paper that referred this to, to Waterfall. And he did also later, at least casually, talk, talk about it as the Waterfall paper. So he kind of accepted that, you know, yeah, it's, it's Waterfall. But in a way, like, why does it even look like that? Like, why does it go from the top to bottom? And, and from, was it like, did he run out of space on his paper? 
And I think that was probably the reason, and that is why you know all these companies are struggling with this. It's just because they couldn't like fit them like this, and it was like, no, it doesn't work. And I was like, oh, yes, <laughs> so, uh, and, and that, that's how it happened. Yeah. 